<coughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome. It is. Let me get over to comments and put this up and that up. There we go. All right. It's the first Thursday of the month. Um, so we're going to have a workshop tonight. I do have the right time. Yeah. Okay. So once I see eyeballs, um, just somebody let me know that uh, all the sound settings are okay. Like thumbs up. Um, and then we'll get going. I have just a couple of announcements and then, hey, Sue. So sounds good or adequate, shall we say. Hey, Julie. <clears throat> all day, uh, no real frog in the throat. 20 minutes ago, <coughs> I can't stop it. So we're uh, talking around a cough drop tonight as per usual. Hey, Deb. All right. So all good. So if you are new here, welcome. If you are returning, welcome. Um, today, first Thursday of the month. Hey, Di. Uh, so I'm doing my virtual workshop and this is good for the whole month. Um, the code is right down here and I'll have my, my vlogs updated. Um, I mean, I have to update it after tonight, like with all the measurements and things, but we'll go over the details later. So a few announcements and then we'll get to it. So if you did not know, if you were not aware, the holiday catalog went live yesterday. Awesome. Um, there are a few things that are already like out. Um, so if you are interested in the glow in the dark bats and ghosts, Hey Penny. Hi Cynthia. The do the glow in the dark bats, goats, and um, the speckled dots that we're going to use tonight. Faceted gems trio. I didn't get those. Um, and the star trinkets. Those are all due back in stock the week of September 25th. So a couple weeks, right? The autumn designer series paper, which is beautiful. That will be back next week, the week of the 11th. Then that glow in the dark paper, October 2nd. Ugh. And then copper and natural ribbon, which I'm going to show you tonight. We're going to use some of the natural part. That's not going to be back until the end of October. But you're going to get a little snippet of it um, if you want the make and take kit. So those things, it annoys me that it's only one day into the catalog and we've already run out of stuff. But it is it is what it is, right? So yeah, holiday catalog went live. Um, there was a new kit that was put out yesterday. It's Christmas Everywhere. Makes nine Christmas cards. They're cute. $21. Um, I think I posted that and have the, the item number if you're interested in that. Uh, then we also have some online exclusive designer series papers. So these were, according to what I read a couple weeks ago, these were, I think, originally planned for second celebration. But then this year they decided they're not having second celebration. So now they're just online exclusives and earlier than they expected um, to publish them. So there's five packs. One is like silver and gold metallic um, adhesive, like glitter paper. So I'm going to get some of those. That'll be cute. Um, then there's like just some holiday ones and then a tartan plaid that has some foil. So check online under online exclusives and you'll see, hey, Jamie Gibbs, you'll see a better picture. Um, and those are always while supplies last. Uh, so get that. Um, BOGO sale. So I am jumping in and having a BOGO sale this Saturday, 12 o'clock here on Facebook. Not doing it on YouTube. Um, and that is because I want all the comments in one place. So with the BOGO, I'll explain it all at the end. Because if nobody, you know, for people that aren't interested, I don't want you to have to suffer through that. But if you are want details... It's on my blog, but I'm also going to talk about it after we finish our projects tonight. Okay. So that's a BOGO. Um, and then last reminder, I've got my September class online class. It's going to be this Sunday. We're making all five by seven cards this Sunday at six and then Monday at eight. And I've got the event created for that. Hey, Amy, at least for, oh, no, wait, I've got to create that. I've got the BOGO event created. Um, so I will get those events, you know, prepared or at least the ads for them, but Sunday at six and Monday at eight. And if you don't catch it live, you can always watch it later or wait for the blog post and, you know, look at the cards cause I'll have pictures and measurements and you decide if you want to, you know, get involved in that. Um, so let's get down to our workshop. So I was going to do originally just pick the patch cause it's a new pumpkin set and I think it's cute. 
Um, but then I like the leaves and there's only so much time. So I had to combine them. So that's what we're doing. Fall fun stuff. Let's go down here. And I'm using both of those. Um, oh, yeah. I got some mail. That is awesome. So Sharon sent me this beautiful birthday card, which I love. Uh, this cute owl. I love the purple and the green. This was that dainty um, delight paper. So I really like it. Oh, Julie, yeah, you can't watch it because it'll make you sad. Yeah, the with the BOGO. You're right. Hopefully somebody in your area would have something like that, right? Um, but yeah, I love the adorable owls. And um, this is a nice, fun fold. I guess that's considered a Z fold, right? Where it folds like that. I love it. Then I got this one from Peggy today. And Peggy, I think you really crushed it on the postage. I think you put enough to send a five pound bag or something, but yeah, I appreciate it. So look, you guys, I love this. She's very, um, a lot of ephemera and a lot of junk journaling. Peggy is very good at it. So I love this pocket. And this is like a, uh, what do you want to call this? It's definitely a, like a double pocket situation, but I love all these critters that she stamps and cuts out, and she's very good at coloring. We got this tag. Milk it for all it's worth. And she keeps her sewing machine, like, out in her craft room. She's got, like, a, I think it's called a featherweight or something. Oh, hey, Peggy, there you are. So, yeah, I love it. Tab punch. Cute tag. Would you call this a loaded pocket or... um an envelope or something. Peggy, let me know. But then she included a little, a bag full of different ephemera bits that I can use in my little, in all my things. I love it. And I don't know where you've gotten these, um, but I like that they're all, there's like some old timey looking things. There's some newer things. I love it. And just random. Oh, love key to my heart. And I love the people. Peggy, I love it. Totally adorable. Oops, and so now I can't get it back. And then I see some more tags. Mmm, I like these. I love them, love them. So thank you, Peggy. Sure, it's loaded. It is. <laughs> but look at this. Good size. So there's a pocket on the back, a pocket on the front. And let's just measure this. So like five and a half by six. I love it. So thank you. And she always dolls up her uh, envelopes with the appropriate um, washi tape. So thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. All right. So tonight, workshop. Um, we're using, well, the focus is on Pick of the Patch and Autumn Leaves. Because I figured you can use any pumpkin set that you may already have. Hey, Gail. You can use any leaf set that you already may have, right? So, oh, thanks, Julie. So these will be interchangeable with whatever you want. And then I'm bringing in a couple of um, greeting sets, layering leaves throughout the year. This is new in the mini. Uh, and then sketch plaid because I've just been enjoying that one a lot lately. So code that is right here on the screen. If during the month you make a $50 purchase and use this code, you will get the make and take packet um, for all the things that we're making tonight, the four cards. If you make, if it's $75 or more using this code, you're going to get the make and take kit plus this pack of speckled dots that we're going to use on the last two projects. Now, hey, Rose, um, these are on the back order list until the end of September. But guess what? I'm not closing this workshop till the 30th. So it'll be fine. Don't worry. Um, and I hand wrote my colors on here. Copper clay. Crumb Cake, Moody Mauve, and Mossy Meadow. So, yeah, it'll all be good. All right, so let's start off with, um, we're going to do some pick of the patch. And I did not pick out my pumpkins yet. So this one is going to feature the Halloween papers. Now, this piece in particular, I love it. They've been doing a lot more of these. Um, actually, let me just pull out this one. Oops, I mean this one, the bigger one. They've been doing a lot more of these papers where, oh, and that's the wrong one, where you cut it in half and there's like a scene on each half. Hold, please. Where did that go? 
because I know I only cut one of them up. Where did it go? All right, hold on. I'm going like right by it. I must be. Oh, yep, here it is. Blech. So this piece, 12 by 12, let's get that all in the frame. So basically you cut this in half and you can make, um, we're going to get three cards out of each panel. So your panel may or may not have the moon on it, but so you can cut it, you know, this way. Um, you can also cut it for mini slims and get like a three by six piece. And then you would get four for each side and then another four here. So you can cut it up, you know, different little pieces, strips, but I like at least, I cut mine five and, um, nope. Yeah. Five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. So I'm going to get six of these panels out of each 12 by 12 piece. The Halloween stock, um, set. Yes, this is in stock. Yep. I think the only thing, the only thing that's out of stock as far as Halloween is the glow in, glow in the dark bats and ghosts and the glow in the dark paper. So if you wanted those, those are the, um, the bats and ghosts are the September 25th and the paper is October 2nd. So unfortunate. All right. So our pieces, we've got basic black, Five and a half by eight and a half. Score at, um, oh, oops, the skeleton. No, Peggy, the skeleton, that's not, the stamp set, um, that's available. That's not on, uh, I didn't list any stamp sets because I don't think anything is out yet. Those they seem to be better about since they actually make them. Oh, it's the dies that are available or unavailable until 9-11. All right, so until next week. Thanks, Rose. So basic black, we have also got um, basic white and this is four by five and a quarter. We're just gonna put this on the inside. And again, I'm using up my fast fuse tape that I have found a stash of. All right, then we've got a piece of white. We're gonna stamp some pumpkins and a greeting and then cut those out. Uh, then we've got Starry Sky. So that's one of, there's only four colors in this paper pack. Basic Black, Starry Sky, Cajun Craze, and Pumpkin Pie. So I love it. And we see it, you know, down here with the Cajun and the pumpkin. Um, so this four by five and a quarter. And then this one, like I said, three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. So I'm just going to tape this on. So you see any pumpkin set that you have is going to work. See, when I want to put tape on, now it wants to stick before I'm ready for it. All right, straight enough. We're going to go like that. So I want to stamp a couple of pumpkins. If you want to make um, like a stack of them, we can make a stack of them. And your paper, like I said, may or may not have the moon. If you get a piece that doesn't have the moon, all you do, punch a circle out, make a mask, uh, like out of just any random, like a post-it note or something, punch a circle, and then sponge in some white craft ink. Let it dry, and then there you have your moon. If you wanted it darker, you could even emboss it in white. Now this, um, if you wanted to stamp on it, that's a different thing. That may not work so well, but. All right, so we're gonna pick some pumpkins. And I love these. Oh, now this came as a bundle. Pick of the patch. It's got a pumpkin bundle. I mean, punch. I did not get the punch. Because A, I was afraid that it was going to run out of stock in, you know, like a day or something. It's stupid. And um, I didn't want to be disappointed. And B, uh, I didn't think it was going to be, it wasn't that difficult to hand cut these things. So I did not get the punch. You feel free to get whatever you want. You know what? I am going to do a stack of these pun um, pumpkins. And then the greeting, I think I'm going to pick Happy Halloween. Because why not? Although in my other greeting set, I could do trick or treat. But we're going to stick with this one for right now. All right. Blocks and pumpkins. So you're also going to get a quarter sheet of basic white four and a quarter by five and a half. And I cut the corner off. 
When I cut that corner off, that means I want you to stamp and cut something out or punch it. All right, and then let's get a couple of these smaller blocks. So I want to do just Cajun Craze and Pumpkin Pie, and I'm going to do some stamping off so we get like four different shades here. All right, Cajun Craze, and we're going to start darkest to lightest. Put that there. So we'll do full strength, and I'm going to have to hand cut this. All right, full strength. And I'm just going to leave that mounted on some blocks. Now this one, I'm going to stamp off. So I want it second generation. So I stamp off and then drag it over here and stamp. Oh, cute. You know what? I could have put that under um, upside down too. All right, wipe. Then we'll do, we need some smaller ones. Now we'll go to pumpkin pie. And this, you could use just about any shades of orange and or yellow. Yeah, Rose, you did need the punch because you got, you made a ton of little, of cutting those things out. I was not going to do it. All right pumpkin pie. And if you wanted to mask these so they lined up nicer, you could do that. I'm more of a, it's good enough. All right. So pumpkin pie. And for some reason, this is, let me wash this. It was getting a little mark. Yeah. Okay. So stamp off and then I'm going to drag that closer to my face. Oh, I like it. All right. Now there's only one face in here, so I'm not going to put a face on it. In this stamp set, there's only one jack-o'-lantern face, and I don't want them to all have the same thing. Football and Tony. Oh, football's on the night die? I didn't realize that. Oh, I forgot my uh, greenery. Actually, I'm going to use that for later. This one, I don't need to have any green on it. Okay, let's put this away. Let's cut this. I guess I could put one face on them. I think it's going to fit the uh, the largest one best, and that's the darkest one here. But I like these colors, kind of ombre pumpkin, pumpkin pole. Are we allowed to say totem pole? Otherwise, what do we call this thing? I mean, it's just a stack. And I could have put my uh, twig on the top of it or the whatever the cord is. You guys know what I mean, the stem. I really do like this with the, the colors. And if you wanted to make your different colored um, pumpkins, like a stack of blue ones or pink ones, whatever you want. Yes, a pumpkin tower. All right, that's cute. Let me see. I wasn't going to do this, but oh, of course, it's got to be at the very tippy top. do it. Why not? All right, that. Now this, I don't want it to wait forever to dry, so I'm going to use my Memento. The VersaFine Onyx is definitely a darker black, but it takes a long time to dry. All right, let's put that right there. You know what? You can hand draw some faces too. Or you may have a stamp already that has smaller, different faces on them. All right. So back to our card. Oh, this is cute. So we're going to have this right there. Nice. I think we're going to do this flat and we're going to pop up our pumpkin tower. Oops. I just dropped my tape. Hold on. 
you know, when it hits the floor, bounces and goes like that way. All right, that's what feet are for. Okay, got that. And then the greeting, I think I'm going to do in Starry Sky just because I like it. All right, I want to pop these guys up. Yeah, Dave and I had to go to Walmart last night, and um, I was saying we got to think about Halloween treats, start making something, get our candy or whatever we're going to give them. Last year, we only got 12 trick-or-treaters. Yeah, Jamie, you do some hand drawing. So yeah, last year, only 12 trick-or-treaters, and I made, I always make 20 little treat bags, um, but the most we've ever had was 17 one year. I mean, we don't have street lights or a sidewalk. It's probably not very inviting. Oh, this is cute, cute, cute. I want it kind of like in the ground here. All right. Mm, nice. All right, starry sky. And we're going to say happy Halloween. But yeah, I want to get over to um, Costco or Sam's and see what kind of candy situation is going on this year. Because I like to make like a box and put like a bunch of different candy in it. And we usually get like the full size bars because we don't have to buy hardly any. All right. Now this you can probably guess what's going to happen. You could punch this out, use a die, you know, whatever. I'm going to cut straight and straight-ish and rip and rip. And that got very close. Oh, that's cute. Happy Halloween. Although they couldn't guess it from the front of the card, right? But still, let's just put some on here. If I go to Costco, please let you know. I will. Well, we've got a Sam's Club up here. Um, I said Costco, but you know what I mean. Aren't they all the same, really? Ooh, see, I don't really want to cover that up. I'm going to put it over here. Like, up a little bit. But I don't want to cover up the tombstone. Ricky Bones. That's funny. Rickety Bones. That is funny. But cute. Now, none of these really go. I thought maybe I might use some of the orange ones. But, I mean, not orange the uh, green ones, but that's just not going to do it for me. All right. Oh, you know what? I need that again. Um, so we'll use those later. All right. So that's our first one. Cute enough. And I already, I cut two while I was at it because why not? Right. All right. Second card. What is this for? Oh, this is to cut more pumpkins. So one of the die sets in the, in the new catalog is these deckled circles. I did not realize how big they are until I got them. Uh, this first one is about six inches. Like you cut a six by six piece and it will fit this largest die. And there are so many of them. So we're going to make, remember months and months ago, I made rocker cards out of just regular, um, I use my creative memory circle cutters. Well, we're going to have, um, it's going to be the deckled edge, but we're going to do the same thing. So, oh, die. Cisco has the tuna that you love, but the person who got it for me moved away. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll let you know when we go. It's not often, but it'll definitely be sometime. Um, all right. So I cut a piece. I took one piece of Cajun craze and I cut both these circles out. So this giant one and then this one. And I use, just so you know, think of these as if we go numbers the outermost, like one, two, and moving in. I used one and two. That's for these layers. And then I went into seven and eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I used these two right here. And then there's still more. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 dies. Good Lord. That's a lot. Now I have not bothered to see. Um, I probably only have circle dies that fit the smaller ones. I know I don't have anything this big, um, but that was an interesting, that was a happy find. Like I didn't realize, I don't read the details on the dies like that. So anyway, we've got our circles. 
So this is going to be on our top. And I don't think the edges match up, or at least I didn't worry about it. Um, so six by six piece. And then I cut, this was like maybe five and three quarters or so. What do I put my dies in? I put them in, I use these sleeves that are from Stampin' Storage. And they're about, hmm, let's just measure. Six-ish, six and three quarters or something by six. So they might say six by seven. I don't know, but they're separate, I think, than the sleeves. So I've gotten a bunch of those. And then I've just been keeping the um, the dye thing in there, the, the paper packaging. Yeah. So that's where I keep them, Amy. And then I just have my dye. Like these things are just stacked up in a box. And I just flip through them. I used to get labels, but then I'm like... I ripped the labels off because if I don't keep them, what's the point? So, ugh. all right. So first we want to fold this in half and you start, we want to get it like a taco shape. I'm just going to roll it, roll it and try to squeeze it a little because I don't want harsh wrinkled lines across the bottom. All right. So I'm just going to squeeze and roll until I think it's going to be good. Yeah, that should be fine. And then press, and then we'll do our bone folder. Now, last time I made these, Sean, I remember, asked me, couldn't you glue these together and then fold? Well, I tried that, and the glue was so strong that when I set up the rocker, it kept wanting to pull these edges out at an angle, like it was trying to pull away. So I don't like that. Um, so we're just going to fold this piece in half as well and then glue it on. I like the full coverage because I think that makes it a little bit more sturdy. So I didn't want to cut this in half. Now this has words. It's just going to be upside down on the back. That's, I got to get over that. Um, but I do want it like kind of at a jaunty angle, right? Because why not? All right. So just fold that. And then we're going to glue it eyeball it right here and that'll be the base of our rocker that's a good size too all right now this i am going to use the glue because i don't trust any kind of tape all right does that look even ish looks good enough all right there we go all right so i've got that all squeezed down and Let's just flip that up a little and go nuts with the glue. Can't have too much glue. All right, let's hold that side for a minute. Yeah, Amy, I like the um, the sleeves. I've had other methods, and uh, this just works better for me. And you know, I've got like a big a big box, and they just sit upright. All right, more glue on this side. All right, and then that'll be that for now. Now we're going to stamp some more pumpkins, cut them out. You know what? I probably should have stamped these ahead of time, but I didn't. Oh, cute. Now this, actually, it's kind of good. It doesn't want to rock too much. I guess because the deco bits are keeping it in line. I like it. So we're going to do have this right here. And I do want to put a tree on here. So we're just going to build a little scene. And this doesn't have to be Halloween necessarily, but we've got Boo and Eek all over. So it kind of already is. All right, let's do this little... Halloween tree. Oh, cute, cute, cute. Now these sprigs that are on here, I'm just going to put them on the tree too. I didn't know what they were really supposed to be. I guess this could be an any season tree, but I'm going to make it like all um, Halloween-y. So let's do... Hmm... Dark brown or black for a tree? I like black. That always reminds me of that story, the, um, the book, The Halloween Tree. And I'll have to drag that out again. 
Mm, oh, here it is, right here in front of me. My Versafine. So I want this nice and dark. But you can make it brown. You can make a real tree color. But I'm going to make this. This is what I want it to be. It doesn't have to be real world colors. And then I'm going to add some black branches. And whatever this is. Foliage. Because why not? Oh yeah. And these kind of fit right on these branches. Cute. I love this. Oops. I missed a, a leaf. I like it. Mess up there. But I think... I don't want to redo it. That'll be fine. So you can see it just a teeny little bit through, and I don't want that. All right, let me wipe this off, and then we're going to stamp some pumpkins and just cut out, like, maybe um, one or two of them. And I do want to add some grass here, so we need to um, get a stamp and Blend marker. And I'm going to grab Old Olive, because I know I have a yep medium. So I'm just going to lay some ground cover, and this one is um, drying up, but that's fine. Because I just want some dried up grass anyway. Just so my pumpkins have something to sit on. You know, clearly they will be on the ground. Alright, let's go back to pumpkins. So, and again, we're going to do Cajun Craze and Pumpkin Pie. And I was glad that I could get this out of one piece, out of both of, you know, both these pieces. Uh, let's do, let's tie it, let's do the bigger one in pumpkin pie this time. Oh yeah, not to size. That is funny. This will be like a giant pumpkin compared to this tree, but totally fine. Then we'll do a smaller one in Cajun. Oh, I love it. Ugh. I always see, when I want to see groups of these, I always think like, ooh, how could I make that like rainbow? I could totally make a whole card with different color pumpkins. All right, now that got a little bit jacked up, but I'm going to have to ignore it. I am going to put some um, stumps on these, though, or stems. And here's my scratch paper from the other card. So I want to do one more pumpkin and, no, let's do two more. We'll do, and we'll cut these out. Because I do want to place some, like, on this side next to the tree. So we'll do that little one and this one. Let's do that because I want to put the stems on them. Now the stems should really be like a brown, right? But the vines can be green. Now this stem is a teeny tiny little piece. So I don't want to lose this. Ugh. All right little sucker and the punch does punch out that stem but again I just didn't think it was all that necessary I'm gonna use pecan pie as the brown at least for the stem part and I'm gonna do one there I want to do one here they're not all gonna get stems Yeah, actually, I want one here, too. Okay. Thing is, when you use these, you got to be careful when you get ink around the edges just because you don't want that to land on your paper. I almost got um, a catastrophe there. All right, and then Old Olive... 
and there's two different stems, but I'm going to stick with just this one. And then this one can come right down in there. That'll work. Okay. Now this is going to go right here. So I can go ahead and glue that on. Oh, that's so cute. Now what I did not include, but I need to, is we need a half of a of the white to go in here so that you can actually write something on here. Yeah, it is a Charlie Brown tree. <laughs> yeah, but see how we're going to put it there. Oh, I love it. All right, let's just go ahead and glue this down. So you can go as tall up as you want. I kind of like it middle of the road because it, it will rock better. If it's up here, you're going to have more weeble wobbly. So about halfway and in the center. Oh, cute. And then we can add our other pumpkins on the sides. And then if you had something you wanted to put up here, we're going to see how it goes. Oh, I love it. That is perfect. So it's really only going to rock if you push it. That's good. All right, let's cut these out. And I actually do want to use, we can use some of these old olive gems that are from the um, speckled dots. So I love these colors. These are in the All About Autumn Suite. And they've got like metallic or copper shimmery bits too. Right, let's put those there. Cut these. So I'm just going to, you know, not spend a whole bunch of time cutting these. So how'd you guys like that question thing today? That was kind of fun. Sue and I um, signed up for the uh, some training thing, and so we're going to see how it goes over the next two weeks. We don't really understand uh, why we're doing this stuff yet, um, but they will tell us at the end. Or at least if they have told us, I missed it. So every day it's supposed to be some kind of challenge, like for so it's social media training, by the way, because, you know, we don't all just wake up and know how to do all the things all the time. We need some kind of guidance. All right. And then one more. But I like Sue's. Sue's asked about um, superpower. And yeah, I would like to be able to walk up and down stairs hands free without crunchy noises coming from my knees. If that could be a superpower. All right. Yeah, these little pumpkins are so cute. And I just got a bag of little pumpkins at Michael's the other day. I went out Sunday because Dave had his friends over for a draft and I didn't want to be around. So I went to Michael's because, you know, to get stuff I didn't need, which, oh, I almost forgot. I got the cutest thing. So look, you guys, this was at Michael's at the checkout line. They always get you with something. Little Ouija board tin or tin with a mint or mints in it. So they got me for $3.99 for this thing. The mints I was going to throw right away, but look at them. They're like little Ouija pieces. But I thought, how cute, you know, have a little album. And this thing is like three and a half by two and an eighth. So could totally make like a, an accordion file little book to go in here. And just how cute is that? I would have bought just the tin, whether it had mints in it or not. Yeah, I'm definitely a sucker. Yep, it was at the checkout line. $3.99. And then I didn't even realize mystifying mints. Ugh. Yeah. They got me. They got me with that one. All right. So this I want to pop up and I want to keep them in line with the other pumpkins. Yeah, it should be an interesting challenge. Like we'll see what they tell us in the next coming, you know, couple days. All right. That can be overlapped a little, 
and then actually I'm going to pop this one up too, like right in front of him. Um, but oh yeah, I got a bag full of like fake baby pumpkins too. Let's put that there. And then we'll have this little guy like, boop, right over there. Cute. All right, so we've got our pile of pumpkins. Now, whatever, like I said, whatever pumpkin set you have, you can use. Now this, it is Halloween with that paper, but we could still say you're the pick of the patch. All right. Why not? Or you're a cutie pie. Oh, that'll be cute. Uh, even for like cards with pie on them. And I don't mean 3.14. <laughs> Although that would be cute too, right? All right, let's do this. And again, I'm just doing this on my whatever I have left here. Pick of the patch. Oh, so cute. All right, let's do this in olive just because I want more green. Oh, that's so cute. So cute, Jamie nerd. <laughs> Look, you know how it is. Who posted that picture of the um, craft store of the, the pie symbol? Nerds of a feather flock together. All right, I'm cutting this. Now, if we want to ink around the edges, give this a little color, we can certainly do that. I'm focused more on trying to get it just like cut straight-ish. All right, that's gonna work. And if you, of course, had a little piece of scrap paper, oh, I like it. Let's put some um, orange. Let's put some of the pumpkin pie around it. And I got to try to get this just on the very edge. This is a teeny weeny little piece here. Actually, yep, it's going to end up going all in the middle too. That's fine. I just wanted it like not so stark white. All right, let me put this away because I think we're done with pumpkin pie. Oh, cute, cute, cute. You know what? These little ones could be lanterns too to hang down. This I feel like is overloaded on this side. We're going to do it anyway because then we can counterweight it with maybe some more gems if it leans. I don't think it's going to lean too much though. Because the deckled business, uh, you know what? Shouldn't have put that last one on because that's hanging off the edge. Live and learn. Cutie pie inferring that you're going to know. Just if you had like, um, like, I don't know, baby pictures or something or somebody's cute kid. Yep. Okay. So I don't know if you can tell or not, but it is leaning a little bit. And that's because we've got all this weight over here. So what I want to do is add as many gems as I can over on this side. And they can hang all over. And we'll see if this helps. That's three. It does help a little bit, but let's add some more. These can be like um, something in the trees. And then we'll put one here. And that, I'm going to have to say, is going to be good enough. Oh, good. Perfect. So five gems, like, off to the right is what got me, like, the right. Um, it stands up straight in the middle. I know you can't see that, but so cute. I love it. Now, I will say... Um, I'm going to give you that half sheet that's going to go in here. It's it's hard to write on it because see how it, when you open it, this part, you know, you can't open it. So you, I would suggest writing on your paper before you glue it in here because it'll be separate. All right. Oh, so cute. 
Yeah, these rocker cards are going to be a lot easier with these dies. I mean, not that my Creative Memories circle dies aren't. They're easy enough, but it's dies are easier than hand doing it. All right, so those are our first two. Now we're going to move over to the autumn leaves for a few. And we're going to bring in this sketch plaid. Um, and actually, I need to move these out of the way. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Good enough. All right. Where's my next? Here we go. So we're going to do Moody Mauve, which I know not everybody has the ink pad, but you're not going to need it because um, we're going to do tone on tone. So I trust that most everybody has a Versamark pad. All right, and we're gonna do some embossing as well on this. Um, and what did I have that for? Don't know. So whether you have the Moody Mauve ink pad or not, you can still make this card. All right, we've got a bunch of pieces. We have Moody Mauve or Moody Mauve, uh, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. All right, then I've got very vanilla four by five and a quarter this is for the inside and i'm not showing you envelopes but you will get envelopes everything comes cut folded scored all that like in its own envelope all right so that is for the inside then we have two pieces of the mauve and Oh, no, wait, one piece. Duh, this is, I cut for two. We've got one piece that, this is three and three quarters by five. All right, a bigger border than I normally do, but I like it. Um, then we've got a quarter sheet of the Moody Mauve, again, with the corner notched off. This is for stamping and cutting whatever leaf you have, all right? Then I've got a piece of, very vanilla. Again, quarter sheet with this cutoff. Uh, depends on what we want to do for cutting because we're going to stamp and cut at least one leaf and have it as an accent. So I'm giving you both of these. You decide which one you want to use. All right. And I'm going to use copper embossing powder. But let's start with our base. And I want to bring in um, the sketched plaid. And, oh, no, wait, no, I want to do it on this. Blech. So, sketch plaid, Versamark. You know, I did want to do this um, stamped off, but the Versamark, I don't think it works the same. We're going to find out. So, if you were going to do Ma Moody Mauve ink, I would want you to ink it up, then um, put your scratch paper over and take off a layer of an ink and then add our our layer this our three and three quarters by five piece but i'm doing it that's tone on tone so versamark gives you the same tone on tone let's see how this works i want it to take some of the ink off because i want it just lighter all right still tone on tone but lighter because I'm going to stamp these leaves on top of this, and I want them, like, full strength. All right. I think that does work pretty good. Okay. You can see slightly the plaid, right? And that's all we want. That's going to dry up, or it's going to stand out more as it um, dries up. I just want to get this Versa mark off of here. All right, I will wipe that better later. Uh, now, if you don't have sketch plaid, you can do any plaid with a marker. So you can always just like draw lines yourself. All right, very cool. Now we want, we're still going to use this first mark. You're going to pick any leaf you want, and we're going to stamp leaves all over this. So we're going to do these two that are um, solid colors or solid-ish. Now they've got, this is the distinctive, so it's going to do that layer. But when you use Versamark on these distinctive, there's no distinction. It's just going to be a solid leaf. Because the Versamark, you know, it's picking up every nook and cranny. 
so we lose the detail. If you are using Moody Mauve, then you will still have some of the detail, but it's all gonna be fine. We just want leaves. So whatever leaf you have, and I don't know what greeting I had decided on. You've also got two um, bits that I cut out and I gave you two in case you messed up. Oh, I was gonna use birthday from throughout the year. Yep. Okay, let's put this here. So any, any leaf that you have, and that looks decent. And then this one. All right, so I want to just random stamp. Oh, let me bring this in. My wrist has been hurting. So this, I'm just pressing it down to help me get better coverage. All right, and then hang it off the side here. And then one up top. And then I'm gonna fill in with the, um, I think it's an oak leaf. Oh, cute. So see how this is already darker than our plaid? So that works. Oh, Amy, don't worry about it. Sorry about all the questions. What size do you like best for the die storage? Um, this size, I think it's six by seven because the magnet is like six by six and three quarters. So that's, that's what I have. Uh, I think they have smaller. I'm not sure, but it comes in. Oh, you know what? Let me see. Oh, I have this right at my feet. Oh, six by seven. Okay, so this is exactly what I get. I usually have a pile of them down here, my feet. Um, dividers two, label 15. So it comes with just like paper in between it, but then I get these six by seven pockets also that fit in them and it's stamp and storage. You should um, keep an eye out because they have sales sometimes, like, I don't know, 10 or 15% off. And some of the other like bigger demos like Patty Bennett, they are, they have like a, um, an affiliate link or something. And some, they'll always say like when they're having a sale. So definitely check for that. So I think they're kind of spendy. Um, yeah. And the one, like the envelopes come in maybe a 10 pack and the magnets come in an eight pack or something. It's like hot dogs and rolls, how they don't match. Or at least it used to be what, you know, bogus. All right. Adding these leaves and then some more. And if you didn't want to add so many leaves, you don't have to, but you know, I like them. And that is an even number. That's dumb. All right, let's do one more right over here. Okay, so we've got our tone on tone background. Uh, and now I wanna do some, let's clean this off. I think I wanna stamp this guy one time and I'm gonna emboss it. And it's gonna be solid. Like I said, the uh, distinctive, it just totally disappears. I'm gonna do this on the Moody Mauve and I'm using copper embossing powder. And then I'm gonna do the greeting on the vanilla. Amy, they have nine by set, nine and a half by seven portrait or landscape. Well, these are landscape for sure. Um, six by seven magnet cards, actual dimensions, six by six and three quarters. Do they not have these, the same thing? I'm going to have to look too now uh, in case I need it anymore. And then this says seven and three eighths by six and three quarters tall. It doesn't say landscape or portrait, but this is definitely landscape because it's seven inches across. See if they have, they have these also. Okay. I mean, this is what I get. The nine and a half by seven. I mean, I guess you could just hold it would just hold more dies. There's only been a few instances where I have to use two magnets for one set of dies. And that's when it had like um, a background with it or something. Generally, they, they all fit on one. Die, thunderstorms are brewing. 
Good to know. All right. Um, so let's do this. And again, I'm not expecting any detail. This is pretty much going to be a solid leaf. All right. Let's do this. Press, press, press. And then I'm going to bring in my embossing powder holder. And again, I'm using copper. You can use gold if you want. Ooh. So look, we did get a little bit of distinction. Not a lot, but when we cook it, that's when it's going to disappear. All right, let's put that there. Um, but yeah, I'm using copper because I think the speckled dots are more coppery looking. All right, and then let's do the greeting. And I wanted to use this throughout the year. I like this happiest of birthdays. And let's do a block. Now I'm putting two of these in your kit just in case you mess up. I don't always do that, but I had a feeling that I might mess up. So, <laughs> all right. All right. That's pretty straight. All right. Press, press, press. I think I got it, but we'll see. Either way, I'm not going to redo it. I should have known um, that I was going over time a little because there's so much I'm chattering, but um, I had to tell all you guys that stuff at the beginning. And then I still want to stick around and I'll give you the uh, rundown of how the BOGO is going to work on Saturday. All right, that's close enough. I'm not going to cry about it. How many times did I say that? If it's more than once, then that's crying. All right, let's do this and we'll get my heat gun warmed up. cute or pretty I should say now this the copper against the moody mauve I mean you can tell it's copper when you're looking at it from an angle um, but it makes it kind of seem pinkish that's interesting interesting good all right so then this I didn't end up using my vanilla piece but you will have you know, yours to use however you want. Mmm, I like it. So we've got tone on tone. Do you see where I'm going at where you didn't need the mauve ink pad to still have this? All right, now this needs the die cut. Um, frankly, I gotta see if it's gonna fit through my cut and emboss. Otherwise, I've gotta hand cut this because I don't wanna take it out in the hall. Yep, okay, it'll fit. Shoo! All right, so we'll do quick cut this out. Now these dies have interesting, you can cut these and overlay them. Like this will go on this one. This I think will fit maybe the leaves. And then we've got some interesting bits here. But all right, let me get this out of the way and drag this up. So we've got our cut and emboss. And I'm going to have to cut this right off. And then I need a little piece of, I usually use a post-it note, but a little piece of washi tape will work also just to hold the die in place. 
All right, let's do, so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just eyeballing. All right, and then that. And where's my other plate? And we'll crank this through. I'm a sucker for any leaf set. So that's why I say you use whatever leaf set you like or that you have. If you love this one, then get it. Um, but you probably already have something available. All right, and then we'll just pop that out and I'll deal with putting that back later. All right, I didn't have that lined up perfectly but it's not gonna be the end of the world. Now I didn't have any ribbon um, for this one. We're gonna use uh, some on the next one, but we're gonna add some gems. So I wanna pop this up and I'm gonna use my dollar store foam to make quick work of this. And then we've got one more card that is actually more metallics and very neutral. I love it. New embossing folder for that. All right, let's peel this up. Now, if you had maybe copper paper, yeah, I was using my little hands. Um, if you had copper foil, that might be neat just as a real accent, just to cut out a die, a leaf, like not even do the embossing and stamping just to cut it out and maybe emboss it like with a folder to give it some texture. But we just want it to be like, to stand out some. I'm really happy that this copper looks a little bit pinky. All right. Oh, and you know what something I, this is kind of related. I had a little teeny little bit of this sweet sugar plum ribbon left. And I just want you to see how well that matches. So if you have this sweet sugar plum, this was an in color from a couple years ago. Um, and I have just, you know, like maybe a yard left and I keep it up here on my desk for randomness. Um, but it matches. Perfect. All right. So we're going to do this happiest. Oh, actually we're going to do this. So we're going to put this one down flat and then we're going to pop up that greeting and add some gems. And I am loving this. All right, do that. And I'm just going to hold that there for a minute and pop up our greeting. Yeah, I love, love, love tone on tone in just about any situation. All right. And especially when, you know, like if you don't have this ink, you can still make something really pretty. So, mm, yeah. I love this. Gold would have looked just as nice, I think. I think the gold would have would stand out a little bit more. All right, now let's add some gems. And we're gonna do one, two, three. And I hear Dave downstairs got the uh, oven going. That's cute that he thinks I'm gonna be finished. I guess he hasn't realized that um, I've been taking longer lately. All right, let's get rid of this glue. Got to clean that up. But there, I love it. And I could add a couple more gems if I want. But I like that enough. And this, I was thinking, so here was my thought. Because, you know, I know not everybody has all these inks. It was either between the mauve or the boho blue. And which, you know, blue, not my absolute favorite. Um, the boho blue, I mean, I like it okay, but I would rather like Tahitian Tide or something, but that was not really folly enough for me. 
So that's why I ended up on the Moody Mauve. But this could have been Boho Blue. Mm, I love that. Okay, next one. Let me turn my page. Ooh, okay. Yep. More leaves. This time I'm bringing in, this is a new embossing folder with the catalog. Uh, I'm going to bring a piece of brown in. So if you haven't seen it yet, Distress Tile. We've had something similar that had kind of like this quatrefoil-ish pattern, but this is distressed. So there's like bits that are, seem like they're sanded off or worn off or something. So, mm, love it. So we're doing all very vanilla because I think it's just really elegant. Vanilla on vanilla or white on white. Yeah, Amy, you're going to love the leaves. I love, I'm a sucker for any leaf though. I've already said that. All right, we've got uh, very vanilla thick all right because when you're doing vanilla or white you want a thicker card base just so it's sturdy um, then we've got this embossed layer so all i'm going to do is glue this down if you wanted to pop it up pop it up but i'm going to um pop the leaves up so let's just glue this see how some of these bits are flat some of the that area that's the distressed part whoa i just dragged my finger right through that glue and of course it's the tombow super sticky oh i got it on the side Ugh. all right let me um wipe that off with a piece of scrap paper okay all right i'm gonna let that dry now, I have got leaves that are going to be die cut for you. So I just cut the shapes out. This is the oxidized paper. So 12 by 12, there's two sheets of each color. There's copper and then pretty peacock. All right. And then they both have like the foil on them. So we've got the pretty peacock and then the copper. And again, I thought we're going to emboss our greeting. Um you know what? And I wanted to use the layering leaves this time. Oh, maybe that's what. So the scratch piece or the piece that you've had extra for your number three card, use that to stamp and you know, whatever punch you want um, or just hand cut it. But I wanted a, mm, like thinking of you. So let's do that. Of course, that's right in the middle here. I love the fonts in this greeting set. I haven't used it hardly at all because the punch went on back order like the first month it was out. I know it was Rachel Tessman's set and she had classes with it. So I think Rose told me she must have had 500 people take that class. I can't even imagine. All right, so we're going to have our cluster of leaves. Yeah, they are pretty, Peggy, like any foil, right, with the leaf... All right, here's the um, ribbon that is out of stock until October. Copper and natural ribbon combo. So this is included, if you get the, if you try to order the All About Autumn Suite, which is you get everything on that page, the stamps, the paper, the embossing folder, the ribbon, the gems, this is what's included. Um, and this is very shiny. So we're not actually going to use this. This is copper but I do want to open it to show you, but we're going to use the linen. All right. I mean, can you see how shiny this is? Very cool. And it's the same shiny on both sides. So you don't have to pick one. You don't have to pick like the good side, bad side, whatever. All right. And then we've got this linen, which I like this wider bit to either just lay a layer across the front of your card and that's what i'm going to do um or i like it for tags or boxes or bags or something it's a good you know what is this an inch it doesn't even say let's how about measure it yep one inch wide okay so what i want is just a little bit like right across here, and then we're gonna add our leaves on top and then the greeting. I've seen people fraying this. They say it frays very easily, which I don't necessarily want it to fray. So I'm gonna fold it so I can dovetail it. 
and then just chop off. All right, and I'll probably give you six inches or so in case you want to go across the whole card. Um, so you'll still get some. You don't have to wait till the end of October. All right, you know what? I'm going to need this. I'm going to have to trim this back some so it covers up the end. All right. Now, this would be a good place for Fabri-Tac if you had it. Um, but I'm also going to use just my fast fuse and really, since this has that wrinkle on it, I'm not a fan. All right, let's see if I can get that pressed down. Voila. Okay. Easy peasy. Got my ribbon down. Now this is going to go like maybe this way. I'm going to have to think about this now. I may have to trim this down. Let's emboss my greeting first. How about that? And then we'll see what I really have to do. All right, so embossing bunny. Versamark that I put away. I meant to put away my Versafine. And we're going to do thinking of you. And then, and then, coffee filter, embossing powder, and I do like to hit it like three times. Cute. I think I could have inked that up a little bit better though, but it will do. And ooh. I poured some of this out right on my table. I gotta get that. Hold, please. Oh, let me get my little thingamabob. Okay, there we go. And then we will heat this up. Okay. Hmm. I should have given that a little wipe, but I like it. All right. So we've got to figure out, I may have to trim this a little bit more. Let's fold that in because I don't want the edge of that showing. All right. I want that to go like right there. Hmm. I like it. All right, now I didn't have, I didn't pick a punch out for this um, because I think it's, I think my oval punch is not big enough. Actually, is it going to fit in the, oh, look, okay. It'll fit in the scallopy part of the double oval punch. Perfect. Okay. And I can have this popped up. I don't want to cover up all of this ribbon that I just laid down. So I'm going to put it like right here and I'm going to do dimensionals. And we're going to bring in some more of our gems on this one. All right. So this will go right up here and then all these leaves will get popped up. Yeah, previously I've done like September workshops are all Halloween, um, but there's not enough time, weeks to do every single thing that I want. So I had to like combine some things. All right, let's go. I really want that like this way and not hanging off so much. All right, that can go there. And then this can come here. Yep. All right, we're gonna pop that up. And then we've got our little one that I'm probably gonna put there. Ooh, and next, so 
Next week, like I said, Sunday and Monday is going to be my class. It's the One Horse Open Sleigh 5 by 7 cards. I'm not using that stamp set. I'm only using the papers and then a bunch of different other different sets and greetings. Um, and the... Oh, you covering up all that ribbon. Um, the snowflake charms that kind of that go with that. All right, let's do that one right there. And then this one can come right there. And I'm going to just glue this one flat. So anyway, Sunday and Monday is going to be class. Saturday is my BOGO. Um, so next Thursday, I am not going to be live. All right, because that's like too many days. Um, but the week after that, the following week, I'm going to do, I have a whole, I have three different projects, seasonal projects to show you using the countryside corners dies. So mm, love this. All right. Now we can use, um, not really the green or the mauve. It does go with that bossing powder, but I'm going to go with the copper clay ones because they are close enough I mean, it says it's got copper in the name, right? So let's just use a couple of these. And I'm going to put some right on my leaves. Oops. All right, there's a big one. And then I want a little one. So there are two different sizes in these, small and large. And then I want to do, oh, I want some over here. One, two. We're going to put five on here. Uh, just because I like them. One, two, three. And then we'll do another one like boop right there. How about a little one? Oh, I love it. So yeah, any leaf dies you have, right? Or if you've got a cricket and you can cut some leaves out, anything. Tony, is this a kit that I will mail out? This is a kit for, um, this is my virtual workshop for this month. So you get this kit, $50 order using the code, the hostess code there at the bottom of the screen. Um, 75 will get you the kit plus these gems. All right, but that, so this is my monthly workshop, good till the end of September. But I love that. I love all that embossing and all that foil. Mm-hmm. Love it, love it. All right, so let's bring in, let's just show a little recap of what we did, and then I will give you the deets about the BOGO sale for Saturday. Um, get this out of the way. So we've got our leaf cards. We've got our rocker card. You're the pick of the patch, which does sit up very nice. And this is going to fit, by the way, um, a five by seven envelope. It's going to be a little roomy, but at least it's going to be mailable. Otherwise you could make one. Um, but so we've got our rocker card and then we've got our stack of pumpkins Halloween card. So that is September workshop and something just fell. I don't know what, um, football game is interfering. <laughs> All right. So, um, so yeah, that's September workshop and I will have it updated. Mm, probably a uh, Saturday night or Sunday have my blog updated with all the measurements so that you can create these on your own. Right. Cause that's the thing. If you've already got supplies, like just make your own. Right. Thanks you guys. Thanks for hanging out. Um, so for those of you that want to know about the BOGO sale, I haven't done one in a while. Um, so what it is. So Saturday at nine o'clock, I mean, not nine o'clock, 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Saturday is the night, September 9th. Um, so here on my Facebook page, I'm getting rid of, I might have 50 sets between stamp sets and bundles um, from years ago. But so I am, BOGO means buy one, get one. So you are going to claim my retired item stuff and you have to buy, you get that for free with a purchase of an equal amount through my store and I will give you a code. Now my blog has a post from a couple days ago that has like all the rules spelled out, but this is the gist of it. I'm going to, you know, have it on the camera, like facing down on my desk. And I'll say like, this is number one and it's $28. Whoever 
comments first, and I'm going to be using my StreamYard, and we'll be able to see it's whoever shows up in my feed first, okay? Because your network, you will always be first in line on the comments because you're on your same network. You're not leaving your IP, right? But by the time it gets to StreamYard and back to me, it's whoever shows up first on my end. Um, so once you claim something, I want you to keep track of your number and the amount. And then after the sale, I have to get with everybody, confirm who got what, but you know, we'll see it in the comments and I'll say like, you know, Oh, Julie, you got number three, whatever. Um, so we'll go that way. And then at the end, you have a couple days. So that'll be Saturday. I'll keep the video up until Monday. Monday night after my class, I will take the video down uh, because if people want to watch later, as long as you're watching with comments turned on real time, you should see comments where people have already claimed something, but Facebook is not great about keeping those comments like in order. So a lot of times they get jumbled up and it's frustrating. Um, so you may just have to check, like I wanted numbers five, 27, 17, whatever. And I'll just have to see like, available, yes or no. Um, and then like, I'll email you the code, you place your order. Now getting your items. If you're local, I live in Severn, Maryland. I work in Columbia. If you're local, we can meet up. You can pick your stuff up. If you want, if I have to ship it to you, I'm going to have to send you an invoice for the shipping. Um, and it'll be, you know, whatever I said in there, whatever I'll weigh it. You know, if it's one set, it's going to go first class. Uh, if it's a bunch, it might have to go the priority padded envelope thing. Um, if it's a whole bunch, it might have to go in a box. So we'll work all that out. Um, but so that is this Saturday, like I said, September 9th at 12 o'clock PM Eastern time. And I'm going to start with my most recently retired things and work backwards. All right. Um, and some I have like going back 20 years. So it's, I need to I've been in this organizing mode for a year, you know, a while and you can't tell anything, but I've gotten like carts, different organizer bins, and there's still just like too much stuff that is not being used. So I have to get rid of it. Okay. So tune in Saturday for that if you can. And if you want to, um, and let me check my list, see if there was anything else. BOGO rules. Yep. The week after we're doing countryside corners projects. And then Sunday and Monday is class. That's this week. Um, yeah, and that's it. So thank you. Um, likes, hearts, shares, subscribes, all that stuff. And thanks for hanging out. Good night, Julie. See you. Yeah, see you Saturday, Peggy. Thanks, Carol. I already have put up an event for the BOGO, right? Yep, I have, Jamie. Yep, I did create that. And mm, that should still be there. Because I, I, I scheduled the stream for it, right? And then that automatically creates an event on Facebook. But just remember, it's here on Facebook only. It's not going to be on YouTube. All right? So, all right. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'll catch you Saturday or Sunday and Monday or the following week. All right.